Let's try and run through the proof of the mean value theorem and after that we'll just investigate the proof of one important corollary which happens to have a great tie-in to our upcoming study of integral calculus. Let's dive in and take a look. The first proof for the mean value theorem was offered by Joseph Lagrange and he was a great mathematician. You may want to uh, take some time after you watch this video to look up some of his contributions to calculus. In our proof of the mean value theorem, we're going to rely on Rolle's theorem. And just to remind you, uh, if you've got a continuous function on a closed interval that's differentiable on that open interval, and f of a equals f of b, then there's at least one c in a b where f prime of c equals zero. And this picture does a pretty good job of graphically depicting uh, the main points of the theorem. So let's just run over the statement of the mean value theorem. Suppose y equals f of x is a continuous function on a closed interval a, b, and differentiable on the interval's interior, open interval a, b. Then there's at least one point c in the open interval a, b at which f prime of c equals f of b minus f of a over b minus a. And the graphic here depicts the nuts and bolts of the theorem. We have the secant line, which is in yellow, and it has a slope f of b minus f of a over b minus a, the typical slope formula from Algebra 1. And then we're showing that somewhere uh, at a point c, somewhere in between a and b, the, the, the derivative at that point uh, has the same slope as that yellow line. So that's this red guy. And notice c is in between a and b. So now let's prove this thing. To begin the proof, let's start with the basic setup for the mean value theorem, which is some function on a closed interval a, b. You can see it's continuous and differentiable. And you can see this yellow line is connected there. That's a secant line that connects point a to point b. Let's go ahead and define that line as g of x. And the equation for that line, if we use the point slope form, for the equation of a line is going to be something like this. Uh, f of a plus the slope, which is f of b minus, oops, f of a over b minus a times x minus a. That's just this the version of the point slope form with our information written in there. So I've defined this new function g of x, which is just the equation for the yellow line. Okay? And let's just note a couple of things. g of a, if I plug in a into this function, I'll get 0 in the x minus a term, and so that leaves me with f of a which makes sense because they intersect at the point a f of a. Similarly, g of b equals f of b. And that's because they intersect down here at point b. Okay, now let's introduce an yet another function. We're going to call it h of x. And h of x is the difference of these two functions, f of x minus g of x. Graphically, that's vertical distance, so h of x is a function that basically calculates the vertical distance between the blue and the yellow. Now the claim is that since f and g are continuous and differentiable, that h of x is also continuous and differentiable in the same way. That is, that h of x is continuous on the closed interval a, b, and differentiable on the open interval a, b. I think that's pretty clear here. So what we're saying is that h of x fulfills the first two parts of the hypothesis of Rolle's theorem. Okay, now, check this out. If I plug A 
into h. That's the same as doing f of a minus g of a. And since f of a equals g of a, h of a equals 0. Similarly, if I plug b into h, I get h of b equals f of b minus g of b. And again, because those two values are equal, we stated that up here, h of b equals 0. So as we said, we have h of a equals 0 and h of b equals 0. And we know that this function fulfills the other requirements of Rolle's theorem. So by Rolle's theorem, I claim that there exists c. That doesn't look right, does it? Ah. In the open interval a, b, where h prime of c equals 0. So we invented this new function h, which is the difference of our original function f of x and our yellow line g of x. And we've shown by Rolle's theorem that we found a point c in AB where h prime of c equals 0. Okay, let's go back to h of x and remind ourselves what it looks like. And then let's take the derivative. Well, the derivative of h of x is simply the difference of the derivative of f of x and g of x. Now, we know that the derivative of g of x is just going to be the slope of that yellow line. So I can rewrite this as f of x equals, or excuse me, h of x equals f prime of x minus that slope from the equation that we had for g of x, which is f of b minus f of a over b minus a. Right? This is just whatever the slope is of that line, some number. Okay, now let's plug the point c in. Remember, c is in that interval, so we can plug it into these functions. I'm going to plug it in where x is in this equation. And now I have h prime of c equals f prime of c minus f of b minus f of a over b minus a. That quantity. But wait a minute. We just said that h prime of c is 0. So this whole thing equals 0. I'm getting tired of writing f of b minus f of a over b minus a just in case you're keeping score. And we're almost there to the end of the proof. So the deal on this is, all I'm going to do is solve this equation for f prime of c, and I will have what I was looking for. So just to wrap up our proof, we now know that when we solve for f prime of c, we get f of b, minus f of a over b minus a. And that proof is now done. That's what we were shooting for. Okay. And I like to end my proofs with a little smiley face. What the heck? That was a good one. So that's the proof of the mean value theorem. Now let's talk about that corollary. So the corollary that we're interested in proving basically says that if two functions have the same derivative, then they differ by a constant, right? Officially stated as if f prime of x equals g prime of x at each point x in an open interval a, b, then there exists a constant, capital C, 
such that f of x plus uh, equals g of x plus capital C for all x in a b. That is that f of f minus g is a constant, right? So we're basically saying that if functions have the same derivative, they differ by a constant, which is what the title of the corollary says. Okay, so let's do this proof real quick. So we're going to go back to our friend h of x. And keep in mind, we're given that f prime of x equals g prime of x. We're given that. Okay. So remember, we had a function h of x, which we defined as the difference of f of x and g of x. Okay? And let's take the derivative. That means h prime of x is f prime of x minus g prime of x. But wait a minute. Those two guys are equal, so h prime of x is 0. And... Let me fix that zero. That's kind of ugly. Oh, goodness. Now it won't write. i got to hit a different button. There we go. Okay, so h, the derivative of h is zero. That means h must be a constant function. So we're going to just write down here that h is a constant. And what better name for that constant than capital C? Okay. I'm going to put a little smiley face right there. Okay, so h is a constant. Well, h of x equals f of x minus g of x, so let's just put c equals f of x minus g of x, and then we'll simply solve for f of x. And lo and behold, we get f of x equals g of x plus c of x. That's what we were trying to prove, and we're going to give that guy a smiley face also. So we've proven the mean value theorem and the corollary, and I just want to show you real quickly how this corollary is kind of cool. Uh, what it tells us is this. Let's say we have a function, excuse me, a derivative. Say we have a derivative which is something like x. We know that a function's derivative is x. And if we want to find that function, we can get pretty close. We can just say, hey, what was it right before we took the derivative? After a little bit of trial and error, uh, I think you'll agree that part of that function was 1 half x squared. What we don't know is if there was a, or what the constant was that was added on that. So there's a whole bunch of different functions that have the derivative of x. They all look like 1 half x squared plus c. And as you move forward in your study of calculus, this plus c is going to become very familiar. And if you forget to put it on there, very much a headache. But that's for another day. So good luck with your studying and hang in there.